Hey guys, this is the Lone Ghouls Vlog a Day 11. Um, I thought today I'd show you how to do something. Um, some time ago, I worked for a short period as a butcher's apprentice. Um, and through the years, it's really helped me save a lot of money on groceries. Because if you can buy steaks and a uh, portion of stuff as whole roasts and cut them yourself, you got to save a lot of money per pound. Which over a period of time is going to uh, it's going to add up. So I'm going to show you how to do something real simple, and it's how to cut up a whole pork loin that you would get from your local butcher. Um, these are really great. There, you can make a lot of stuff out of this, and uh, it's pretty cheap. I got this for uh, on sale for less than two dollars a pound. Okay, so you're going to make sure you get a good sharp knife. I'm going to use this. It's not really a proper butcher knife, but it's the sharpest knife that I have. Okay, so you're going to flip this over. You want to cut along the underside of this. You're going to separate the, uh, the shrink wrap and get it out of the way. Uh, make sure you have a good cutting board. I would put some uh, paper towels or something underneath it just so the juice from the meat doesn't run all over the counter. And you may want a garbage bag nearby to throw the plastic and stuff in, all right? So, once you have that free, okay, you see it's a rather large piece of meat. This side of it, which you'll see, looks like your basic pork chop. The other end is kind of fatty, and uh, the butchers jokingly call that the ugly end. Okay, I'll show you what to do with that. Okay, so from the clean end, you decide what you want to make out of it. Uh, I'm going to make some chops. Um, they'll be boneless loin pork chops, same as you would buy at the store. And uh, by making them yourself this way, you can freeze them and uh, take them out and throw them whenever you need them. So you want to take a good sharp knife. You want to give yourself as wide as you want them. I say uh, three quarters of an inch or so is good. You just want to go through it in a nice smooth motion. On the bottom of this, there is a piece of fat that's going to be a little tough to get through. Um... You might have to make a couple passes to get through it. And there you are, a pork chop. It's that easy. Um, we'll do a few more of these. They're pretty easy to do. Just make sure you cut straight through. I, I keep a plate on the side to put them on so they can sit, and, I, and I'll break them into packages later. Generally, I'll put two or, you know, two or so in a pack. I mean, it's... For one person, it's really easy to just take two pork chops out and make them for dinner. Um, obviously, whatever size packages work for you and your family, that's what you do. All right. I'll show you what to do with this other end now. This end that they jokingly call the ugly end. It's uh, very good to make a roast out of. Um, you can just, you know, finish cutting wherever you want your pork chops and leave a nice chunk and use that as a roast. Um, you can also do something that they call country style ribs. Uh, country style ribs are actually like a, a boneless pork loin. It's the end part of it. And it's actually pretty tender, but it has some fat running through it. So I'll show you how to cut that. It's, um, uh, you can usually buy them. They're pretty inexpensive, um, in your local butcher. And, uh, they make a great meal. Out of the way. All right. So this piece here, you actually want to like fillet. Uh, by doing that, you want to put your knife in the middle of the piece of meat. Okay, this way, and you want to cut through long ways. Generally, the rule of thumb: you don't cut towards yourself, but you are gonna have to steady it with your hand when you start it. All right. As you're cutting, you can actually start to pull this back a little bit. So that way your hand is not in the way of where the blade is. You know, don't worry, take your time if you're not familiar with it. You know, the biggest thing is make sure you have a knife that's sharp enough that's going to cut through. A dull knife will cause more accidents than a sharp one. Yeah. 
the meat is very moist, it's not the easiest to get through. Alright, so now we're going to have two fillets. You know, you want them fairly thick. Um, they'll be, you know, half an inch thick or so, all the way down. Alright, you just want to take these, you can lay them right on top of each other, and you're going to cut through them in strips, the same way you would do a pork chop, as I just showed you, okay? Now when you cut through them, what you're going to have is a piece of meat like this. Uh, it's not long. It's not pretty. Okay? It's like that. Alright? Th these pieces of meat, you can uh, fry. You can put them in with some barbecue sauce. Let them cook that way. Uh, you know, you can do a lot of stuff with them. They're a cheap, easy meal. Uh... And like I said, you'll find them all the time you butcher them. They're usually fairly expensive to buy on their own. Because uh, that's basically what it is. It's that, that end of the meat that they're not going to use to make pork chops or that don't make good-looking pork chops. So they cut them up that way um, so people buy them. Um, it's a real tender piece of meat, obviously. Anything, you know, when you're using pork to cook. Pork dries out very easily. You don't have to overcook it. Uh, you don't want it to be rare. But, you know, a, a touch of pink in the middle isn't going to hurt you. Um, so, that's it for the long ghoul for how to cut pork chops and roasts and stuff, whatever. If you uh, want any tips or suggestions on whatever kind of meat you want to cut, obviously boneless is the easiest because you don't have to work with a saw or anything, um, but feel free to shoot me an email or put a comment uh, in the section and... Uh, and I'll try and help you if I can. Alright? Cheers.